Welcome back to the Body and Soul series. We've been at it for several weeks now, and next week is going to be the last installment of the series. Now, a few weeks back, actually, I think it was the very first week, we talked about this really central idea. We as believers, as disciples of Christ, we were bought with a price. Remember what Paul said? We are not our own. On the cross, to redeem us, to save us, to set us free, Jesus, he purchased us. The redemption price was paid with his blood. And so we now, as his, are instruments of his blessing in the world. We are tools of of redemption in a broken, sin-stained world. Because of the cross, we have been set free. And because of the cross, we have a great responsibility to serve. And so I want you to join me in reading that passage with me. From the book of Galatians. If you would read with me Galatians 5, verse 13. Okay, I'll read it. There we are, there we are. You, my brothers, read this with me. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Serve one another in love. In love. This is really what we've been working toward the past few weeks. This is our purpose. If I may be so bold, this is the meaning of life. It's what we were made to do, designed by God from before time to be about. Write this down on your outline this morning. My purpose, body and soul, I have been equipped by God to be a blessing to other people. That's what I was made for, to be a blessing to other people. Peter put it this way in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Peter said that God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Everybody's got a gift. Use them well to what? Use them well to serve one another. Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything that you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory, all power to Him forever and ever. Amen. So Peter is saying, that's what you're here for. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. God has given you what you need to bless and serve. Now use it well with all the strength God has given you. So here we are, created to love God and love others. We thrive and we flourish when we live in harmony with this mission, the mission that we were designed for. But we fall short sometimes, don't we? (laughs) We fall short. Everybody falls short sometimes. One of the things, honestly, about the Bible that I most love and that I most appreciate is its honesty. It tells it like it is. Look, when the Bible talks about great women and men of faith, it doesn't just gloss over their failures and weaknesses. It records them for us. Because of this, we not only get a glimpse into how great people of faith in the Bible blew it, but we get a glimpse into our own hearts, into our own selves. Think about the apostles, all right? the big 12 there. Um, according to the Bible, we know that these guys were close to Jesus. We know they were handpicked by Jesus. We know that they were loved by Jesus. We know that they were personally instructed by Jesus. Uh, we also know that they had, some, they had some pretty sketchy moments, right? I mean, they had some pretty dodgy moments there, stuff that they would not want to go on their apostolic highlight reels. And no, we're not just talking about Judas Iscariot here. They were people like us. Now, they were set free. They were called to love. They were called to serve. They were called to be about the ministry of their rabbi, their master, Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, at times, they, like us, got really caught up in themselves in their own personal interests and agendas. And you get a clear view 
uh, of this as you work through the Gospels when you find that a theme of their conversation, like what a, a topic that they just went back to over and over again was the topic of who's the greatest? Which one of us is top dog? Which one of us is number one in the kingdom? In Matthew chapter 18, verse 1, they come to Jesus with this question. Hey, Jesus, who is the greatest? And we know contextually they're talking about themselves. They're saying, hey, Jesus, rank us. Which one of us is, is the best? Which one of us is number one? I think it's me. I want to hear your answer, Jesus. All right? Mark chapter 9. Jesus really kind of busts them in Mark chapter 9. They are arguing amongst themselves again about which, who among them is the greatest. And Jesus calls them out on it. Then in the next chapter, James and John kind of sneak up to Jesus when no one else is around. And they ask Jesus, hey, when you come to your kingdom, when you receive your glory, how about making us number one and number two? Wow. So they were called to be free. They were called to love and to serve others, but they got entangled often in these webs of self-interest and ambition. And these webs have been entangling women and men ever since, well, I mean, really since the beginning, right? Since the Garden of Eden, since Adam and Eve um, it's like that story of the young mom who got up early one morning. She was going to fix breakfast for her two little boys, Landon and Ben. And their favorite breakfast food was chocolate chip waffles. Nothing wrong with that, by the way, chocolate chip waffles. So she got up and she started to make those chocolate chip waffles. They came into the kitchen in their jammies and everything, and they saw what was going on. And they started arguing over who was going to get the first chocolate chip waffle well mom saw this as an opportunity for a teachable moment and she said boys quit fighting think about Jesus think about what Jesus would say if he were here right now you know what he'd say he'd say let my brother have the first waffle I can wait and the boys kind of sat there in silence for a moment. And then the older one, Landon, spoke up and said, Hey, Ben, you be Jesus. <laughs> you be Jesus. But I think that very much is the core of teaching in the New Testament, is you be Jesus. And it's not easy. It's not always easy. And then, of course, the fighting started all over again, right? <laughs> well... Whether it's a couple of brothers fighting over who gets the first chocolate chip waffle or 12 apostles of Jesus Christ fighting over who's the top dog, there is this dynamic at work in us, in all of us, the dynamic of selfishness and self-interest. But this question, this question of greatness, look, Jesus doesn't tell them it's a bad question he doesn't tell them it's 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 a misguided question to think about greatness in fact jesus kind of affirms it but he turns it around right and he gets to the heart of what greatness is really all about greatness is serving others What we're going to do is we're going to follow a thread of this conversation that runs from Mark chapter 9 into Mark chapter 10. It starts as the disciples of, are conversing, coming into a village, seaside village, Capernaum. And then it is going to continue on the road as they head off toward Jerusalem. Here we go, Mark chapter 9. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, So guys, what were you arguing about on the road 
I love this next one. But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. A little bit embarrassed about that, huh? Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had them and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. And as I'm working through this passage, and then the one in chapter 10 as well this week, I'm thinking of different hashtags I could put on different parts of the story this morning. And the first hashtag I came up with is hashtag selfish is normal or selfishness is normal it is it's the world we live in all right everywhere you go you are going to see it in play this week selfishness is normal selfishness is the usual operating system for people for human beings and so as they walk into into Capernaum I imagine Jesus out front on the road and the disciples on purpose are drifting back so that they can have this conversation without being overheard they want that buffer zone there because they know this is a little bit of an embarrassing conversation Jesus wouldn't be proud of them for arguing about this because the whole conversation which one of us is number one Again, you've got to appreciate the honesty of the Bible, all right? You can't make this stuff up. Here are the key 12 leaders of the New Testament who will take the mission of Jesus out into the world, the 12 disciples. At this moment, it's more like the dirty dozen, I would say, um, because they're no different from Landon and Ben. They're no different from boys arguing over who gets the first waffle. Which one of us is the most important? They're thinking about themselves. They're thinking about positions, privileges, power. And remember, these are 12 guys who, they know Jesus called my name. Out of everybody, Jesus chose me to be part of his inner circle had to make their heads swell a little bit when they thought about that and after all they're also walking around with Jesus their boss their Lord and watching him do all manner of miracle day in and day out feeding the sick multiplying bread and fishes walking on water healing the lame healing the blind healing the deaf they're expelling demons there's nothing this guy cannot do limitless power is exuding from Jesus. Editorial comment here. Throughout the Gospels, it does seem that the apostles are much more intrigued with this limitless power than with his limitless love. So they argue about who is number one. And Jesus has overheard, and they are embarrassed. They just are quiet, don't know what to say. Now look, if these guys who are closest to Jesus, if they struggle with selfishness and power trips, what right do I have to think that I am somehow above that, right? Hashtag selfishness is normal. And then just after that, James and John, they get a private moment with Jesus, very next chapter, even after this lecture, they get a private moment with Jesus, and check out what happens. Mark 10, verse 37. Arrange it. They're talking to Jesus. Arrange it, they said, so that we will be awarded the highest places of honor in your glory. 
one of us at your right and the other one at your left. They're still not learning. Selfishness is so ingrained in us. These brothers want the highest places. They want the glory. Jesus, this is their prayer, right? They're talking to God here, the Son of God. Lord Jesus, make us your number one and two. Give us the places of highest honor. Now, I suspect if you were to rank the most self-centered prayers of all time, this prayer of James and John would be near the top. Dear Lord, make me number one. Give me all the honor. Not those other guys, me. And my brother, a little bit for him too. <laughs> so selfishness is normal, which gets us to the next hashtag here, which is over, hashtag overthrow normal. <laughs> I mean, that is Jesus to a T. Hashtag overthrow normal. Service, not selfishness. Service is the default operating system for the kingdom for the kingdom of God. Selfishness is normal, and look around, normal isn't working. Hashtag overthrow normal. In Capernaum, and this is likely at Peter's house, Peter lived there, successful fishing business. So Jesus asked him, so what was it that you guys were really arguing about back there on the road? No one says a word. They get really quiet. Jesus, of course, knows what they were talking about. Verse 35 in Mark 9, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last. And speaking to this culture, selfishness is normal culture, Jesus says, basically, I know it's normal, right? I know it's normal. In fact, in chapter 10, he's going to talk about that. He's going to say, I know how it works. Leaders want power. They want to be number one, and then they want to control everybody else. I know that that is normal. I know that that's what you guys see on a day-to-day -day basis. But, chapter 10 Verses 43 to 45, but, Jesus says, among you it will be different. Let me say that again. But among you it will be what? It'll be different, guys. I know that's the way it works. I know that's normal. Among you, keep it weird. Don't be normal. It's going to be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man, God in the flesh, even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and give his life as a ransom for many. So we, the disciples of Jesus, are called to break this vicious cycle of normal among you it will be different among us it will be different hashtag overthrow normal we are called to humbly serve and if the son of god if jesus who had limitless power and authority if he washed feet If he fed the hungry, if he hung out with the lepers and the outcasts, we have to do the same. Now here's the rub. Just a moment of honesty for each of us this morning. We serve. We serve our own I mean, we help out our friends. I serve them. I serve my kids. I serve my wife from time to time. That's, <laughs> but that's not how Jesus served, right? Yes, he served his friends, but that's not how he limited his service. And that's, he very intentionally went outside of that circle 
to minister to people who were outsiders, who Jews would have considered way too sinful to serve and minister to. To foreigners, to enemies of the Jewish people like the Romans. He sought those people out to minister to them. And he calls us to be the same. To hashtag, to be inclusive. To be inclusive in our service. That's that next point there. Be inclusive. God, or rather great people, serve without exception. They don't just serve their group. They serve without exception. Look at what Jesus says very simply here. And I would, if I had a pen, I would put a big circle around the last word in this phrase. Mark 9, 35, Jesus says, Be the servant of who? All. Be the servant of all. Is there a group or a kind of person that makes you uncomfortable? Sure there is. Who are they? Is it the Democratic group? Is it the Republican group? Is it a discomfort based on someone's sexual orientation? Or maybe their race? Or maybe just not comfortable around this socioeconomic group over here? Or not comfortable around people with this religion or these religious views? So my question, I have to look in the mirror and ask myself, will I serve them? Will I be the servant of all? Or will I practice the normal which is, let's call it selective service. <laughs> I'll serve, yeah, I'll serve. Serve my people, my friends, my group. Finally, this may be the hardest one yet. <laughs> Hashtag expect nothing. Expect nothing. Great people, this is the deal, this is the distinction. Great people serve without expecting to get something in return. Great people serve without expecting a return on their service. Service, and this is the weird thing about it, service can be either selfless or selfish. I've been reading a bunch of books lately, been fascinated with the Roman Empire, with Cicero and some and, and Caesar and different biographies about different great people of the Roman Empire. Service was, was based, it was, ha, it was the currency of the empire, believe it or not. If you were super wealthy, if you were super powerful, if you were a member of the senatorial class, the way you gained influence and power and exercised that was through service. Most often, you would financially help other people. Give them a loan or just give them a gift. Help their child get a position or a rank. Vote an honor for them in the Senate. Make sure that they got a large portion of the spoils from the latest combat or the war. You would serve the veteran soldiers by allotting land to them. Great job on those victories. Here's your land. But you did it. To increase your power base. Guess what? Politics has not changed, right? Has not changed at all. That is service, folks. But there's nothing special at all about that kind of service because you are expecting to get something back. Now, it is not wrong to serve your wife and kids. That is not the sermon this morning, okay? It is not wrong to serve your friends. But back to this Jesus' idea of greatness. Great people serve without that expectation of reward. Without that expectation that one day they're going to pay me back. Without that idea that they're going to be indebted to me now and that's going to help me out somewhere down the road. The way Jesus makes his point, and you've got to love the object lesson here, 
There's several children kind of around the periphery. I mean, people were just magnetically attracted to Jesus. Even the children were. So he grabs one of them, takes him in his arms, and he says, Here, let me make the point for you. Verse 37 in chapter 9, he says, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Now, it can be hard sometimes to tell whether I'm serving out of genuine uh, selflessness or self interest but in this case it's pretty clear these kids these children they're powerless they don't have any positions or any prestige they can't do you a solid in fact the kids if you serve them if you bless them I'm just imagining you're one of the apostles and you're they're gonna they don't even know your name and they're gonna forget about you tomorrow you're not going to get anything in return. These children are not power brokers, all right? And Jesus says, if you're helping one of them, you're serving me. Hashtag expect nothing. That is the key to the kind of service that marks true greatness. It is the kind of compassion that Jesus extended to everyone that he met. Luke 6, remember what he said? He said, if you love those, think about how he he unmasks us in this passage. Okay, Luke 6, Jesus says, if you love those who love you, (laughs) big deal. What credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good, Nice. If you do good to those who are good to you, big deal. What credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. Love without expecting to get anything back. Let's be very clear. Jesus didn't just talk the talk, right? He walked the walk. He cared for people who would never call him Lord. He died for people who voted in the Sanhedrin for his execution. He served people who would never consider doing anything to help him or his ministry. He's the guy who said, love your enemies. Serve those who persecute you. And how Jesus did that, how he lived that out, serving and blessing people, regardless of how they felt about him and his ministry. So the big question, I think, how can I overthrow normal? How can I have what it takes to serve all? That's the big question, and the answer is, I can't! On my own, I can't do that. But if you've given yourself to Jesus, body and soul, that's what it means to call Him Lord. I'm yours. And if you've given yourself to Jesus, then you are not just working with your own limited resources, are you? Amen? (laughs) I mean, we have been on the receiving end of the greatest gift of love, the greatest outpouring of grace, the greatest, most sacrificial gift of all time, the receiving end of what Jesus did for us on the cross. He died in my place. He died in your place. And he's covered us in grace. He has lavished his love over us. He has overwhelmed us with his forgiveness. Basically, when I look at what I have in Christ, (laughs) it's an embarrassment of riches. It's an embarrassment of riches. In Christ, I have received more compassion than I know what to do with. In Jesus, I've got more love, more forgiveness, more mercy, more generosity. I've received more of that through Him. 
through his gift freely offered on the cross. He has filled me up right to the overflow. I can't contain it. So will I join him in serving? Will I choose to be selfless in a selfish, shallow world? Will I, by his love, break free from the mediocre, break free from the normal, the ordinary, and will I follow him in this path of greatness, being a servant of all? Every one of us needs to answer that. And that's not, a, it's not like you just answer that today, right? We wake up each morning and we have to answer that. Will I serve all today? And maybe for you, it's that simple choice to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to be buried with Him in baptism, and to begin walking in the middle of this meaning and this purpose for which you have always been designed to live. And if you need to make that choice, you can do that this morning. If you just need prayers, get up and pray with somebody or come pray with me or one of our shepherds this morning. But let's respond as we stand together in prayer and praise.